Kia ora and welcome everyone to Big Life Mindset. Today's episode is another in my series called Living Your Passion. During this series, each female guest will highlight the challenges that women face in chasing their passions. They'll share some practical advice and provide guidance to husbands, partners, brothers and friends on how we can support, empower or just be there for them. My next guest in the series is chasing a dream in a heavily male-dominated environment. It's an environment that is grounded in physical conflict, close contact, and it's often quite painful. Despite this, Danny Steed is a purple belt at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, or BJJ, in Wellington. She shares some great insights on how to deal with being super shy, the difference between what's the worst that can happen with what's actually likely to happen, and what great support can look like. A special shout out to Vanison Perez and everyone at The Combat Room. You can find out more on Vanison and The Combat Room by checking them out on Instagram. But for now, please remember to click follow and subscribe. Alright, let's get to it. Danielle or Danny? Something else. Yeah, Dan- Danny's fine. Danielle's Danny. fine as well. Prefer sure. Danny. Yeah. Prefer Danny. Let's go with Danny then. Danny, would, uh, we both go to a place called the Combat Room, which we're in now. Did you want to describe the Combat Room a little bit? What, what, where are we? Yeah, so uh, we're in the gym right now, mm-hmm. uh, sitting on the mats. Uh, combat Room is a place where we, we both train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yep. It's a nice place. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a it's a combat sport, mm-hmm. um, predominantly self defense based. Mm-hmm. So it's a uh, grappling. You basically, come here and uh, kind of wrestle on the ground. Any striking? Uh, no striking. You, what got you into it? Why Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I guess I was I was looking for something to do for exercise that was. A little more social and dynamic than just going to the gym every day, which was starting to get a little bit boring. Mm-hmm. So I had a look around at some kind of martial arts and settled on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And tell us a little bit about yourself. So what got you into this? What got you into the combat room? Um, pretty much, well, I was going to set up a few trials around a few different places and... This was the first one that I tried, and mm-hmm. yeah, signed up on the first night. So Did you really? yeah, yeah. Wow. Pretty. What was it about the first night that made you sign up? Yeah, I think it was just the how friendly everyone was, really, and mm-hmm. like willing to accept someone who was completely new at something. I'd never tried it before, and uh, our coach Vanderson was was really friendly and yeah. op- open to yeah. I think he choked me a few times on the first night, so I was I was uh, impressed. No, it's just all good nature jokes, yeah. by the way. This is all <laughs> yeah. part of learning, Kevin. It's not just a random thing. Um, and so, did you have any experience with um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu-Jitsu or martial arts growing up? No, none. Um, yeah, I'm from a small town, so there wasn't much of that sort of stuff available. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't really do much sports growing up or anything, so. Yeah, in terms of physical activity, this was pretty, pretty new. Yeah. Cool, cool. You actually, um, you stretch the perceptions, I think, of what many people might have of a person doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You just told me, so I've just learned uh, that you studied something I'm a massive fan of. What did you study? Um, yeah, I came up to Wellington to study science. I did a double major in maths and physics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so impressive. That's really cool. Yeah. Do you find any of that, uh, is there any aspect of what you've learned or how you've learned that transitions to BJJ or JITS? Um, yeah. Sometimes I think it's like I've got the theory kind of there of some of the like kinematics and uh, the ways motion should work, but you know, applying that with my body is is a different question, really. Yeah. That's buzzy. That's buzzy that you can see, even the ability to see um, something that would cross over is helpful, I think. Yeah, it's like playing playing pool, though. You know you know where the ball should be going, but actually getting it to go there is 
is much harder. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, so in, Bra- in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, in BJJ, um, it's very much a close quarters martial art, right? Yeah. Um, as you mentioned, kind of, there's a lot of similarities with wrestling and also with judo, which means that you're, you're, kind of, you're in a very up close and personal space with someone. And I think mentally for, and this is a generalisation, but I feel like mentally for a guy it's probably an easier path to go down. What has that experience been like for you? Um, yeah, I think when you first get started it can be a little bit jarring, um, but it's really easy to just forget about um, once you sort of get used to it. Um, sometimes, you know, I look back at the bigger picture and think, wow, I'm you know, spending all of this time wrestling with sweaty people and, like, you know, can be a little bit gross when you think about it, but it doesn't doesn't feel like that when you're actually doing it. And what are some of the challenges that you've encountered? Um, yeah, so I guess I've been training, like, almost five years now, and my first two or three years were fairly, definitely more challenging, I think, um, in terms of motivation as well as, motivation is probably the big one actually, Um, you know, actually forcing yourself to come to a place, like, you know, going to the gym can be tricky, but, you know, forcing yourself to go and do physical activity with a bunch of people that you're not really close to can be tricky when you get started. Um, but I started making friends and finding, you know, I've like this ended up being a bit of a, my social life as well as cool. like my exercise. So a mm-hmm. bit of a combo there. And um, I think it's also really hard when you don't feel like you're good at something to keep trying to get better at it. Um, there's a bit of an expectation that, you know, after you've done something for a little bit, that you'll be good at it. And that's not the case. You, there's definitely progression, but it's, it's slow and it can be really rough to keep trying when you feel like all you're doing is getting beat up um, sometimes, yeah. But then, like, there's a little, like, ray of light and, I don't know, you do well in a role one night and that's enough to sort of keep going. Yeah. yeah. And is it something that you, you're you able to kind of reflect on that, you know, when you walk away from the gym or is it something like, like during the course of these roles? Or so a role, those that are uninformed, the role is essentially where you and one other person kind of compete you're using your skills and technical ability against the other person. Um, is that during the course of a role you're finding this this inside or is it like you know two days after and you kind of recovered from the beating and then you say oh man now I get I get what's going on here yeah there's usually like that uh self-reflection in the car on the way home where it's either like oh man tonight sucked or um you know I'm really excited about all the, the cool new things that I've learned and you know maybe one of the things that I learned I managed to pull off in one of these roles um yeah, so it's usually after class, yeah. and I think I always feel really great after training, regardless of how things went, um, and I think that's what helped motivate me a lot of the time when I was a bit apprehensive about showing up. Um, I'd just say to myself, you know, I, I'll feel so much better after I finish, yeah. and that was always right, yeah. Man, that's cool. That's cool to be able to get those um, little bumps as well, which I think um, often we overlook, or we just forget even exist. Um, so the environment here, as in many other jiu-jitsu gyms, is it's, it's pretty much a male-dominated environment. What are some of the, are there, or are there any challenges that you've experienced from that, and what have those been? Or, um, yeah, I guess there's the sort of biological differences between being a woman and I guess rolling with men, Mm -hmm. um, they can typically be a bit stronger or bigger or both. Mm -hmm. Um, And 
so that was something that I'm still getting better at like working around and you know talking to the guys that I roll with and making sure that they understand um, you know whether it was a little bit too rough or um, just making sure that we both learn stuff from each other yeah. instead of it being like a just a, a beat down yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah um, you know, I've, and I just mentioned before, I made this like gargantuan mistake one time when I rolled with uh, a lady here, and uh, she was higher belt than me, and that was all I saw. I didn't see the person, I just saw the colour of the belt. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I was just all strength and all trying to, you know, all strength and all just trying to um, basically just meathead my way through it, so to speak, and, and really overlooked that opportunity to learn and to have an open mind to take on board those learnings. So I, I think I wasn't coachable. Yeah, yeah. Well, like the sort of ego gets in the way sometimes, mm. right? Where um, you see someone who's a high, higher belt than you and you want to like prove your skills and show that you kind of can match them. Yeah. But, um, you know, we're all just training here. It's not really like a competition or anything. So yeah. we just want to make each other better. I mean, you're an amazing feedback loop as well. Like, I, I've really enjoyed the, the roles that we've had, and you've just been candid enough to say, oh, you know, the pressure was too much, or actually, you know, we could have lifted the intensity or something, which is, like, as a person who is still coming to grips with, like, where the levels sit for each person, mm-hmm. it's, it's so helpful having that. Yeah, I guess it's been hard for me as well, mm-hmm. um, because I want to, I want to think that I'm as, as strong as everyone, and... Um, you know, sort of prove those stereotypes wrong, but it's it's just not true. And I think what helped me get a little better with that was um, the, I guess, the example that I'm setting for like other women at the gym who may not be as strong as me and may want to give feedback. And so if the guys are used to hearing feedback from me, then they'll be a little bit more uh, receptive to feedback from others, I, I hope. Yeah, yeah, I think that's sort of what got me trying to work on that a bit better, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm pretty conflict avoidant usually. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Which is, I, I ask that because it's such a surprising environment, right? Because it's literally like... It's quite an adversarial one-on-one thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, physical physical conflict's fine, but, yeah, just conversational conflict isn't so much. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. That's cool and stuff to have. So you're a freshly minted purple belt. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, the, the grading system from white to black goes white, blue, purple, brown, and then black. And each one of those has five tabs, four well, on the fifth, you move yeah, up. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot to get there. There's a huge amount to get there. And I'm a, a working example of someone who hasn't got there yet, um, having failed the purple belt exam. You've got an experience where you've got a training partner. You guys, uh, like, you're here regularly. You're working alongside each other. Yeah, so um, myself and Luke, my training partner, yeah. have been... Um, we worked on the blue belt syllabus together and did the purple belt syllabus together as well. Um, and we do the Friday evening classes, yep. so we take those. Um, I've been that's it's really helpful to have someone who I can sort of bounce bounce ideas off and who I'm really comfortable training with. And it's helpful to have someone else around when you're taking the classes as well, because if I'm not around or he's not around, then we can fill in for each other. Nice. Do you think does that kind of relieve relieve you of some of the pressure? Yeah, definitely. Um, can be a little bit shy myself, so helps to have someone I'm comfortable around. Um, you know, if I'm feeling like there's a bit too much pressure on me, then mm. he can take the reins, which nice. is good. Nice. Um, one of the key things I'm, I'm looking at pulling out from the understanding of these these journeys that you go through is if you've got somebody who is in that supportive mindset and does want to help, what are some of the characteristics or what are some of the practical things that somebody can do to help? Yeah, so I think just being supportive in 
Like if you're, if anyone's looking for like a way out or like an excuse not to train, mm. then not giving that has is sort of what's helped with me, for example. Um, because I was always sort of looking for validation, like it was okay to take a night off and um, to have people say, nah, just show up, you'll feel better afterwards, um, was just, I guess, the little push that I needed. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's still hard, but having having people around me that support me and who are, you know, going to be okay with that is is really cool. Nice, nice. That's huge. Yeah, it's it's not much really, I guess. Like, I don't have, you know, family at home that I need to look after, so that's that's helpful. Um, pretty independent in that sense. Like, I can make the own my own decisions to come and train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've taken some nights off and I've sat at home and been like. Man, I wish I was a trainer right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's a common thing, though. I think every time you kind of acknowledge, oh, yeah, I should have gone to training. It's like, oh, I really should have gone. Yeah, like, and that two hours drags on really long. It does, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> like, whatever I'm doing, even if I'm watching Netflix or something, so I'm going to fill the gap midway through it. I'm thinking, God, I should have gone to training. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that, that builds up, though, as well. And then, yeah, makes it so much harder to take a rest day. Yeah, and you're consistent as, um, like you're one of the people that I, I feel like every time I'm here, you're going to be here. So building up that, um, I guess that pattern, that habit, has that been a difficult thing to do or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think kind of like I mentioned, not being good at something mm. is, is really hard. Um, particularly for me, I found like I'll pick up a new passion, hobby, and then I'll drop it mm -hmm. fairly quickly when I realise that it takes a little bit more effort than I was expecting. So I think like that turning point for me was when I got blue belt um, and I sort of just realised that I managed to stick in it for this long. You know, I'll probably, probably enjoy it for forever now. So, yeah. And yeah, like definitely having that routine and discipline to just keep showing up is is helpful for sure yeah and do you is this the kind of thing where you talk to your, your mates about it and say you guys want to come down with this or this is a very much a no Danny this is kind of my my jam this is what I'm going to do or what does that look like um yeah I've definitely sort of mentioned it to a, a few friends in the past um especially like my female friends trying to enlist some more women mm. but you know, if it's not this sort of thing, it's not for everyone, mm. that's for sure. Um, I think everyone's capable of doing it, but nice. it's also nice to have, like, my own thing as yeah, well. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think are some of the barriers that stop? Like, I've got what I perceive as the barriers to coming on, and I know it was difficult to come through that door the first time. That was actually really hard for me to do. What do you think are some of the barriers from a female perspective to doing um, BJJ? I think it's just, you know, we sort of build up this, uh, like, stuff in our imagination of, you know, what, what this is going to be like and I'm going to show up and get, you know, hurt by all these people. And that, that was definitely what I was thinking when I was considering signing up. Um, but, you know, the only thing you need to do to kind of dispel those myths is just to come along and give it a go. And, yeah, I quickly realised that that was all just in my imagination, you know. Nice. That's a really cool, um, once again, a really cool insight to have as well. I like, I like using that phrase at Vanison, like, so just keep showing up. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. You do just get better eventually. Yeah. I'll let you know when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> for me I mean um, so you've done this how, how long have you been doing um, BJJ again? yeah almost almost five years now I think almost five yeah. years that's awesome man um, and this is like five COVID years mixed in there as well right so yeah, yeah, a lot like a of excuses time. available to tap out and to kind of step away from it if you if you wanted to yeah. um, what does what does the next three six months look like for you? 
pretty much the same, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, I'm just going to keep keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully progress. Nice. Because <laughs> we've just started a new um, self-defense kind of focus over the next month as well. And once again, that's added another layer of not so much complexity, but I guess if people are worried about this, then there's enough reason for them to not attend. What do you think is something that you could share that other people would benefit from so that they would come as well? Yeah, I think the self-defense stuff is, is really important, um, like particularly as a woman mm -hmm. in, in the big city. There's a lot of things that could go wrong, and I guess it's just important to make sure that if something like that did happen, then I'd be more confident to deal with it. And I think a lot of people probably don't prepare for that enough. Mm. Um, I don't know if you can ever be fully prepared for that anyway, but just having a little bit more confidence mm. in that sort of situation is, is good for everyone. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and just kind of picking up on that confidence, like, do you feel the experiences that you've had here have transferred to any other facet of your life? Yeah, totally. Um, I never thought I'd be on a podcast or anything, you know, like doing anything like that. I'm, I'm just super shy usually, so it's it's really built my confidence up in in a lot of different ways. Yeah, yeah. That's oh man. Thanks. Obviously, you know, the pressure's on mine. Um, but that's cool to hear. That's something that's as seemingly unrelated as martial arts and Brazilian jiu jitsu can translate into other facets of your life, like being able to speak on a podcast yeah well like I've got to have the confidence to you know show up and roll with all these like new people as well that I've never met before and you just sort of start getting used to it I guess and yeah makes everything else seem a little less scary you know yeah I guess I guess something that's helped me a lot is like sort of trying to ground my expectations with with these sorts of things like um, whenever I'm worried about doing something new I sort of try and think like you know what's the worst that could possibly happen then I go what's what's the best that could possibly happen and then what's most likely to happen is probably in between and it's pretty usually pretty plain and boring and not that um, scary after all you know there's a great image to have as well by the way just I love that as well it's like we, we're so often drawn towards all God, what could happen? It could, it could be terrible, it could be the end of the world, but it's very rarely that case. Yeah, yeah, and it's very rarely the best that can happen either. It's usually just something, you know, plain and in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So, like, having that expectation set is, I think that helps me with a lot of things, yeah. Awesome, awesome. On that note, thank you so much again for joining me for this conversation. I really do appreciate it. Man, that was really cool catching up with Danny. One insight I found, I found about her was that Despite being super shy, she is always willing to help out and lend a hand. You know, even today, while myself and another guy were practicing throws on each other, and badly I might add, she came over and she gave us what the correct technique look, looked like, and then she just headed off to her own training. That's really cool stuff. All good. Okay, well, please remember to click follow and subscribe, and you'll join everyone that, according to the Spotify end of year report, has helped my podcast to be in the top 10% most shared globally. Uh, you can also find me on Insta, TikTok, and my YouTube channel, which is e Rakanui, that's my handle, or just check out the show notes for more details. All right, bye for now.